Hello and welcome to Miniature Adventures. I'm Big Lee and this week I want to talk about irregular unit sizes. Does it really matter how many figures are on a base? So today's video is another one of those uh, that's been inspired by random conversations that I've had uh, online and with some of my friends, a little bit of friendly debate. Um, uh, in any game, um, you're going to get uh, a certain figure ratio is envisaged by the author of a set of rules, for instance. Um, and if it's anything other than one to one, uh, then the bases are really just tokens for a group of men. So, for instance, you might have a base with a dozen models on it, if uh, uh, or a unit that consists of a dozen models, but it doesn't represent a dozen people. It might represent represent hundreds of people. Um, and you know, they are really just tokens. So. There's usually a specific ratio in the mind of the rules author. You know, uh, one model represents X number of uh, people. So, for instance, for my Wars of the Roses stuff, the ratio is approximately 1 to 15. Um, so, for each model on the base, it's about represents approximately 15 uh, soldiers. So that, you know, uh, when you work that out per unit and then up to the army size, it matches the army size that I was aiming for for that particular battle. Um, the same is going to be for any other set of rules or, or, or the way that you've interpreted the rules. There's usually going to be a certain figure ratio in the mind of the author who's written the set of rules. But the question is, does it really matter how many figures are on that base? Now, of course, I'm being a, a little bit cheeky here because I'm thinking specifically uh, about six millimeter figures because that's primarily what I play with. And of course, that means that I'm going to be pushing bases around on my table that have uh, several models on the same base. Uh, obviously, with most 20 minute, 28 millimeter games, they're going to be individually based. Um, uh, maybe in a movement tray or something like that. But essentially, you can do figure removal with those that represent, uh, often the rules will insist on, so figure removal as a way of representing uh, the number of figures that have been, uh, a number of men that's been killed, or the represent, a, usually a, a representation of not only casualties, but fatigue and everything else. Um, but for six millimeter figures, you tend to have, or at least I have with the, the rules and the models, the way I've based my models, is that you tend to have a fixed number of models on a base and there's another method, a separate method for monitoring casualties and morale and fatigue and so on. Usually in my case, I like to use dice, for instance, behind the, the, the bases, but you can use tokens and various other things. You can keep a, 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 a rotor, for instance, a tally uh, of how individual units are doing. If you want to keep your um, admin, if you like, off the table um, and and do it all on a, on a sheet, on a, on a roster for the, for the army. Um, and if that's the case, it does, as I've said, it begs the question, does it really matter how many figures you've got on a base? Now, I regularly base up 48 figures um, uh, on a base, on one of my large bases, particularly for my puny or stuff. Um, 48, 6 mil figures on a nice base that looks really good, it looks like a proper unit. But does it really matter if I've only got 47 models? Um, I have, on occasion, done just that. So going back to 28 mil figures, obviously there it's a little bit different because we tend to have them individually based um, and the standard unit size for that game is going to be 16 figures or 20 figures, depending on the set of rules. Um, and the number of figures remaining determines presumably the, the hitting power, the staying power, the, you know, the, the morale factor in some, in some sets of rules. Um, so it's it's crucial that you've got that representation, um, and and as I've already said, you know it, those sixteen or twenty models are actually going to be representing maybe three or four hundred soldiers. Um, so individually, those figures are tokens representing an X number of men. But for games where you might base everything on one base, it doesn't really matter whether you've you're not quite at the figure ratio that the, the rules author had in mind because the base represents that unit regardless of whether it's slightly more or slightly less. Um, you know, some systems, as I say, will have you remove figures, but for when you've got a base with loads of figures on, um, 
there's going to be other methods for recording that. So it doesn't really matter if you've got slightly more or slightly fewer models on a base. And it's particularly useful when you come up against situations where uh, manufacturers, for instance, sell models that are in, let's just say, odd sized packs that where no amount of combinations will add up to a full base. <laughs> <laughs> as often happens that, admittedly that happens more often than not with 28 mil figures but you know also situations where you're trying to make that extra unit out of the, the figures you've got left and you're just short of what you need and you don't have to buy a whole new pack just for the sake of finishing that base and i've done this myself on more than one occasion um, with my punic war stuff in particular some of my uh, cavalry bases for instance will, will have one or two more or less figures than the amount that I normally would put on that base. To be honest, it doesn't really matter because the base itself is representative of a set number of figures and when it's down on the table, you're not really going to notice it too much, um, even when they're next to each other. Obviously, big differences, um, but also I think there's a, a, a point of realism here. Go on any battlefield situation, you are going to have units on the table that are normally the same strength but in reality they're going to have casualties of one kind or another there's going to be people that are um, un unfit and so on um, so you're never going to get say two companies or two regiments that have got the exact name and number of men in the field because there, there will always be reasons why that number is below the nominal strength of two companies that should be identical. And so I don't see any problem personally with uh, having a little bit of variation um, between two bases that have multiple figures on them. And of course it has to be said that this obviously works better with smaller scales where you're more likely to base multiple figures on a single base. Um, but the same could be true if you're gonna be pushing around a uh, a movement tray with a unit on uh, so long as you've got some way of knowing what the actual casualties of the unit are does it really matter if there's one figure short obviously the the fewer models in that unit the more that difference will stand out um, so you know for those gamers out there who like big battles and big regiments with lots of 28 mil figures in it again if you're one short does it really matter um, you're going to push that base around and that's your base you know you know how many you, you should have and it doesn't really matter if there's one model less um, certainly I wouldn't be advocating going out and buying uh, an extra pack for that one extra figure who can afford that sort of wastage these days um, so certainly from the point of view of putting together units from the existing packs that you've got and finding that perhaps that you're, you're one or two models short there's a way around it, just use the fewer models. You know, as I say, I've done it plenty of times. I've done it with 15 mil stuff, and I, I certainly do it on a regular occasion with six mil figures, where sometimes you just ain't quite got enough figures. I mean, like for instance, if you've got multiple ranks in a, a, a six mil models on a base, and you put one less figure in the rear rank, does it really matter? I think in some ways it looks slightly more realistic. Um, so certainly um, I've done that in the past. So what do you think? Am I skirting on the edges of blasphemy? Or do you think I'm talking complete sense? Am I triggering Wargamer OCD? Or breaking free of the constraints imposed by the rules designer? Or am I simply one figure short of a base? As always, I'd love to hear what you think, um, what your experiences are. Do you do the same as me? Uh, please leave your uh, thoughts in the comments below. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, a little bit shorter than usual. Um, uh, and if you did, please like, subscribe and share. And if you want to keep up to date with weekly content from this channel, please tap the bell notification icon. So until next week, look after yourself, keep gaming, and of course, keep rolling high.